Amen. My friends, welcome. Please be seated and make yourselves comfortable here in the house of God on this blessed and sacred day. This is a day that the Lord has made and we are already rejoicing and being glad in it and we will continue to do so. I'm Reverend Dave Ledford. I'm the pastor here at the United Methodist Church at Evseekin. It has been our honor and privilege to host and welcome all of you today. Special thank you to the dozens of people from our church that have gone into planning this day and cooking for you afterwards. And we're so glad that you're here to enjoy it all with us. Let's pray together as we begin our time. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and lead us and guide us and equip us that we might do the work you're calling us to do and that we have come here today to honor and celebrate a new leader in our district that you have lifted up somebody that you have made in your image to lead us in our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Holy God, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us, on our minds as we hear your word, and on our bodies as we turn your words into actions. Holy God, help us to block out all distractions that we might fully worship you this day together. We pray for all these things in Jesus' name and all God's children said, amen. Would you please rise for the call to worship? God of wonders, you have said your elders will dream dreams. Make us ready to build them in our communities. God of what is yet to be, you have said all your children will prophesy. Make us ready to proclaim the new thing you are doing around us. God of the future, you have promised to pour out your spirit on all flesh. Make us ready, God of wind and fire, to be transformed in the receiving of the spirit that all we say and do and pray If you are able, please remain standing as we pray the unison prayer. God of our journey, as we gather together, we lift up our voices to give praise and thanksgiving to your name, the God of encounter, who by the power of the Holy Spirit makes us one in Christ our Savior. God of our journey, as we journey together with Christ, who walks alongside of us day by day, may we embrace your presence within us and discover your presence in the people whom we encounter along the way. God of our journey, as we journey together in the power of the Holy Spirit, enlighten our minds and our hearts and our intercultural encounters with one another and with all cultural families, so that we may become and the bearers of your faithful word. God of our journey, as we journey together as disciples of Christ, set our ministry and transform our lives by your grace, so that we may go forth into the world to proclaim the good news and to build up the reign of your love through our acts of justice, compassion, and mercy. We ask this through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing for our songs of praise, if you are able.
and you're glorious your love has made me victorious you took away the fear in us now we praise you cause you delivered us there ain't no stopping us no devil there ain't no blocking us come and clap your hands with us our god is an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with wisdom power and love our god is an awesome god our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and grace. 
our God is an awesome God. You're marvelous and you're glorious. Your love has made me victorious. You took away the fear in us. Now we praise you cause you delivered us. There ain't no stopping us. No devil, there ain't no blocking us. No, come and on, clap your hands with us. He's an awesome God, he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God, our God. He's an awesome God, he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and grace. Our God is an awesome God. sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burdens Lay down your shame, all who are broken, lift up your face, oh wanderer, come home, you're not too far, so lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. hope for the hope there's hope for the hopeless and all who have strayed come sit at the table come taste of the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken lift up your face oh wanderer come home you're not too far so lay down your hurt lay down your heart come as you are Come as you are, fall in his arms, come as you are. There's joy for the morning, O oh sinner be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. 
Good afternoon, everyone. It's time for a scripture reading. Uh, let me read the scripture, the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 43, verse 1 through, especially the uh, first part of the uh, verse 5, in Korean language. <coughs> Isaiah 43장, 1절부터 5절, 전반부 말씀입니다. 야곱아 너를 창조하신 하나님께서 지금 말씀하시느니라 이스라엘아 너를 지으시니가 말씀하시느니라 너는 두려워하지 말라 내가 너를 구속하였고 내가 너를 지명하여 불렀나니 너는 내 것이라 네가 물 가운데로 지날 때에 내가 너와 함께 할 것이라 강을 건널 때에 물이 너를 침몰하지 못할 것이며 네가 불 가운데에 지날 때에 타지도 아니할 것이요 불꽃이 너를 사르지도 못하리니 대전하는 여호와 내 하나님이요 이스라엘의 거룩한 이요 내 구원자임이니라 내가 애굽을 너의 속량물로 구스와 스바를 너를 대신하여 주었노라 내가 내 눈에 보배롭고 존귀하며 내가 너를 사랑하였은즉 내가 내 대신 사람들을 내어주며 백성들이 내 생명을 대신하리니 두려워하지 말라 이것은 살아계신 하나님의 말씀입니다 This is the word of God for the people of God Thanks be God Good afternoon. I will read the same scripture in English, Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 5a. But now, says the Lord, the one who created you, Jacob, the one who formed you, Israel, don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, and the flame won't burn you. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in your place, because you are precious in my eyes, you are honored and I love you. I give people in your place and nations in exchange for your life. Don't fear, for I am with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Isaac Reese, and I'll be reading Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, in Spanish. Al entrar por la fe en lo que Dios siempre ha querido hacer por nosotros, ponernos bien con Él, hacernos aptos para Él, lo tenemos todo junto con Dios, gracias a nuestro Maestro Jesús. Y eso no es todo. Abrimos nuestras puertas a Dios y descubrimos en, en el mismo momento en que Él ya nos ha abierto las suyas. Nos encontramos de pie donde siempre esperamos estar, en los espacios abiertos de la gracia y la gloria de Dios, de pie gritando nuestra alabanza. Hay más por venir. 
Seguimos gritando nuestra alabanza incluso cuando estamos acorralados y acorraladas por los problemas, porque sabemos que los problemas pueden desarrollar, desarrollar en nosotros y nosotras una paciencia apasionada y que esa paciencia forja a su vez el acero templado de la virtud, manteniéndonos alerta para lo que Dios haga a continuación. En una expectativa alerta como esta, nunca nos sentimos defraudados o desfraudadas. Al contrario, no podemos reunir suficientes recipientes para contener todo lo que Dios derrama generosamente en nuestras vidas a través del Espíritu Santo. Es la palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I will be reading the same scriptures, Romans 5, verses 1 through 5, coming from the Message Bible. And it reads, By entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us, set us right with him, make us fit for him. We have it all together with God because of our master Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged, quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
It is a joy to see you here today, and I want to especially thank the United Methodist Church of Absecon for hosting us here today, and the great leadership of David and all of the lay leadership. Thank you so much uh, for hosting us here today. Uh, today, I would also like to introduce uh, Jana's family who has come to be with us today. We have Don, who is uh, Jana's husband. Don, why don't you stand up so we can see you? Don is uh, a, a professor at Palmer uh, Theological Seminary, and we're grateful for his leadership in helping to raise up new clergy. We have a number of graduates from Palmer here in greater New Jersey, and our, yeah, there we go, I got one waving right here. Uh, but uh, we're grateful for your leadership, and thank you so much for uh, sharing Jana with us. Also uh, with us today is Steve Perkis, who is uh, Jana's brother, and we're grateful for him be, his being here with us today and his support of his sister. And then we have Leah, who is Jana's daughter, and uh, welcome Leah, and uh, Zach, who is the fiance of Leah, and uh, they'll be getting married very soon, in a few weeks, right? New Year's, New Year's Eve, all right, there you go. What, talk about new beginnings, and what a great way to start uh, the new year. And uh, also we have uh, Jana's grandchildren with us today. Uh, we had um, Soraya. Yep, see, Soraya's right on cue here. We're grateful to see you, Soraya. And then also Brock, who's with us today. And Brock, so let us share our, great, our appreciation and welcome for Jana's family. The role of the district superintendent is an extension of the work and ministry of the bishop. I do not choose district superintendents lightly. I look for people who have a strong and growing faith. They have not arrived yet. God still has more for them. I look for people who bring a deep sense of commitment to the church, love for clergy, and support for the laity. And I look for people who have the gifts of administration and coaching and mentoring, of leadership. And in this season, I particularly look for people who are healers. As we emerge from the pandemic, and sort out our denomination. I look for people who bring a non-anxious presence. They can be with people just as the people are and feel comfortable and relaxed in their presence. It is not by coincidence that I have chosen Jana Perkis Brash for the role of superintendent. She has been preparing for this ministry for a long time. She began her ministry, uh, her, her first ordination as a deacon. We used to ordain people twice, now we just once. But uh, Jana was ordained a deacon in 1983 and then a full elder in 1985. She has served churches throughout greater New Jersey, and she has served in the roles of associate pastor as well as senior pastor. Her most recent uh, church that she served was the Princeton United Methodist Church, and then she became the executive director for the Stewardship Foundation of greater New Jersey. And there she served faithfully for five years, and helping that foundation, she picked it up, but it was still uh, working along. But that foundation has gone from $4 million to, well, the market hasn't been so good. But uh, we're right at about $50 million. And uh, Jana has done a great job uh, with that work. I also want to acknowledge our former district superintendent, who is now the executive director of the foundation, uh, Brian Roberts, who is with us today as well. They just kind of traded places. <laughs> Jenna has also been preparing for this role and this work uh, throughout her ministry career. Um, and in two different churches, she convinced the board of trustees not only to have a live nativity, but to have a camel 
at that live nativity. Now that is preparation for being a district superintendent. <laughs> She also, several years ago, took up zip lining, which again is, prepares you to be a district superintendent, <laughs> willing to jump out of trees with nothing but a rope and a wheel. That is preparation for superintending. In all seriousness, God has continued to work in the life of Janet Perkis Brash to bring her to this place, and at this point, when the church desperately needs leaders like this. And so won't you welcome today, Jana Perkis Brash, your new district superintendent. Okay. Jana, we have a couple of questions to ask as you begin this ministry. Jana, you have been appointed to be among us for the ministry of word and sacrament and called to a special ministry of supervision and leadership. You are called to guard the faith, to seek the unity, and to exercise the discipline of the church and to supervise and support the church's life, work, and mission. Do you affirm your commitment to these ministries in our midst? I affirm my commitment to these ministries in our midst. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as people committed to participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, will you support and uphold Jana in these ministries? There is one story that bishops are given a shepherd's staff so they can reel people in when they need to. But the honest part is that a bishop is a shepherd of the whole church, is one who serves among the people and with the people, is one who is there to guide and support and to lead and to challenge in the ministry of Jesus Christ. As I said earlier, the superintendent is an extension of the ministry and work of the bishop and carries out the work of a shepherd over a district and even over the whole conference. And so we have this symbol here today to remind us that uh, the cabinet are here to serve you and are here to be with you in ministry. We're grateful for your leadership in these times. We're especially grateful for all of our clergy who have been leading in some of the most challenging times to lead the church forward. You have been a gift to us and your ministry and mission among us has made us proud as your leaders. Also the laity, in the midst of some very challenging times, you too have led, you too have been faithful, and you too have supported the church in and through this time. And don't think that we haven't noticed. Your faithfulness is an inspiration to us. So today, I invite Jana to come and hold the shepherd's staff. Don't get too comfortable with it. <laughs> but as a reminder of her work in and among you, carrying out the work of leadership in the church. And I invite our cabinet to come and stand around Jana that we might lay hands on her 
and pray with her today. Just come on around. That's it. Great. Come on in. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, we never know where ministry will take us. We just one day said, here we are. We are willing to serve. And God, you've raised up leaders in the church who have been faithful and gifted and have served you in so many ways and in so many ministries. And today, God, I give you thanks for Jana, for raising her up to be a leader of your church. God, we just pray that you would continue to use the gifts in her to help lead this district and this conference to be more like Jesus Christ as we call, recruit, and develop transformational leaders to make disciples of Jesus Christ and to grow vital congregations for the transformation, the change in people's hearts and minds, in communities, and in the world. God, you've raised us up in this time to be healers and leaders, to be justice bearers, bringing an end to the sin of racism, seeking equality for all people. Yes, God, these are not easy times to lead in, but you continue to grace us with leaders who are well-equipped and ready to serve. And so today, God, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon Jana and that you would fill her with your spirit in this day and in this season and in this ministry. Grant her the wisdom of the spirit. Continue to ignite her passion for ministry in the spirit and continue to guide her steps in the way that you would have her go. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Well done. And now there are signs of the work that we will do together that will come forward. Janet. Take this Bible and be among us as one who proclaims the word for the edification of believers and the conversion of the world. Today, the Bible that Jonah presented is my third grade Sunday School Bible from Trinity United Methodist Church in Broadway in 1967. <laughs> Mimi, take this water and be renewed in your baptism and renew us in ours. And I have the privilege of baptizing these two. Jana, take this bread and cup and keep us in communion with Christ and his church.
And I couldn't go without inviting two Palmer graduates who happened to be among the first of my students when I taught there, Ken and Katherine Johnson. Jenna, take this hymnal and book of worship and lead us in prayer and praise. Reverend Fred Day, Mr. Methodism. <laughs> <laughs> Jana, take this bowl and basin and be among us as one who serves. So happy to have Brian Robinson present this that represents service as he is a candidate for the Order of Deacon. Jana, take this stole and shepherd us as our pastor. The stole that was given to me the day that I was ordained elder in 1985 by my sponsors, Reverend Robert Kirk and Reverend Jimmy Samuel. Jana, take this book of discipline and strengthen our connections as United Methodists. Next to the Bible, my favorite book. Jana, take this globe and lead us in our mission in all the world. Thank you, Nicole. I look forward to sharing in mission with you and the people of the Cape Atlantic District. I'm, I'm all about symbolism and also sentimentality, and so would also share with you that uh, the robe that I wear today, my mom made for me as I was being ordained deacon in 1983. And the stole is the stole from the Medford United Methodist Church as they sent me on to the Princeton United Methodist Church. I would like to take a moment of personal privilege to say thank you. Thank you to David Ledford, who helped me to be a bit more relaxed about today because he has a very similar attention to detail that I have. And so I could just take a deep breath and relax because I knew he was in charge. And to this congregation, the United Methodist Church at Absecon, who are our gracious hosts today, I want to say thank you for your willingness to offer your hospitality this day. I also would like to say thank you for this beautiful prayer shawl that comes as a gift from this congregation. Thank you so much. 
And then to Priscilla and to Bob, who have led us in our music today, our instrumental music, and Ray, who led us in our vocal music. I also would like to say thank you to Shelley Smith and to Anna Gillette for the beautiful worship design. It's so me. Thank you so much. And to the GNJ staff who have been a part of the preparation for this day, uh, thank you so much for your presence here today. And then to the bishop and to the cabinet, thank you so much for letting me be part of a great team. Thank you. So I would share with you today that I love to travel. This summer, my family and I took the trip of a lifetime to France and Italy. We departed for France on August 6th, but really, the journey began back in December of 2021. That's when I started making lists. <laughs> there were eight of us traveling together, and so that took a lot of planning in itself. We had to find dates that worked for everyone, be sure we all had current passports, reserve lodging, buy airline tickets, set up tours, and arrange ground transportation, among many other things. For me, the joy is both in the journey of preparing to go and in the destination, the getting there. Friends, we have begun a journey together as Cape Atlantic District and District Superintendent. For me, this journey did not begin July 1st, but rather at the end of January when I said to God and Bishop Scholl, here I am, send me. We've all gone on a journey at one time or another and know that there are times when it will be smooth sailing and other times when we just can't seem to find our bearings. And we know for sure that the journey is more than the destination. Today, we acknowledge this journey that God is calling us to. And today, I would invite you to commit to the journey with me. At the end of the message, there is a call to action that gives us the opportunity to join our hearts and voices in making a commitment to this journey that God is calling us to. And so in preparation for that, I would share with you some things that I believe God is calling us to commit to. To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Yes. To being in prayer for the journey and for each other. To turning to scripture to guide us on our way to be Holy Spirit-led congregations of passionate disciples who are connectional and Wesleyan in our beliefs and practices that we might work together to be the church of Acts 2. What that means is that we will create inspiring worship, be intentional, about growing faith through small groups, children's ministries, and youth ministries. 
to engage in risk-taking community witness, mercy, and justice mission, to extend radical hospitality, to make new disciples, and to grow all disciples, and to increase generosity and giving to mission. Also, I would invite you to ministry that is actively developing cultural competence and engaged in ending the sin of racism. And to ministry where everybody is telling somebody because a faith worth having is a faith worth sharing. As we set out on this journey, it is so important that we pack well. We need to be sure that we have what we need when the unexpected arises. My husband Don and I pack very differently. <laughs> I start packing two weeks ahead. Don starts packing two hours ahead. <laughs> Guess which one of us has an umbrella and an extra pair of socks just in case. We as a district need to pack for the journey to God's future and we need to pack well. Friends, we need prayer in our suitcases, but that's not where it stays. It comes out when we pray in our personal prayer time, in our churches, and when we gather as a district. We need to take scripture along on the journey. The scriptures that I have taken with me on the journey for most of my adult life are the ones that were read for us earlier from Isaiah and Romans. And today I'm not exegeting these scriptures, but sharing them for the power that they have to guide us on this journey that God has called us to. From Isaiah, don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you won't be scorched and flame won't burn you. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, and I love you. We do not go on this journey alone. Rather, God goes with us. On any journey, there are going to be twists and turns when we find ourselves in murky waters, when the current could sweep us away, when we walk through the fire, God says, do not fear. You are mine. I love you. The Isaiah passage carried me through a dark time in my life. And since then, I have held on tight to these words, knowing we can navigate the twists and turns of any journey that we set out on because we belong to God. God is with us in Christ Jesus. Romans speaks to us of the results of risking what we know, what we're comfortable with, to set out on that journey with God. Living into this passage 
has helped me to stretch and grow and live out God's call upon my life. I hope it might do the same for us as a district. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience within us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered virtue of steel, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. On our trip this summer, we had, of course, a plan for places that we wanted to visit in Italy and had arranged for tours ahead of time. But we also built in time to be spontaneous. So when three of our guides mentioned the village of Volterra as a place to visit, if we had time, we took a risk and decided to head there for dinner one evening. The journey was one filled with winding turns, stunning vistas, hairpin turns that Zach was driving for, enjoying the beauty of hillside vineyards. And it was a long way up that mountain. And when we got there, we struggled some to find parking. Yet, when we finally walked into that walled village of Volterra, we experienced beauty in the people and architecture, and there were amazing surprises everywhere we looked. And we had some great food. When we follow Jesus, we may be called to take an unexpected turn, go somewhere we had not planned on going or even wanted to go. In the New Testament, we see an example of one who made an unexpected turn on his journey. One day, Jesus called some fishermen saying, follow me. One of those fishermen was Simon Peter. If you know much about Peter's life, you know that when he left his nets, Peter didn't have a clue where this new journey might take him. Peter may not have known where the journey would lead that day that he decided to follow Jesus, but Peter was ready for a journey. And his life was never the same again. Cape Atlantic District, Coastal Plains region, are you ready for God's future? A journey to God's future where you will never be the same again. If we say yes to this journey, our lives will never be the same again. We'll be stepping out into unknown places, taking hairpin curves. It may be a long way up 
the mountain, but think of the people we will encounter and the lives that will be transformed because we have shared our faith. Consider the beauty of seeing a community come together to break down the barriers of racism. Imagine living into God's future. Are you ready for the journey to God's future? I am, and I hope you will come along with me. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I would like to invite you to stand and join with me in this call to action. People of God, when the world seems too much, how do you respond? We choose to follow. Disciples of Christ, when fears and uncertainty keep dreams imprisoned, what will you do? We will choose the future. Beloved of God, when the spirit moves, how will you respond? We will act in faith. People of the Cape Atlantic District, are you ready for the journey? We are ready. We are ready. Let's go. I would invite you to join me in Here I Am, Lord.
May we bow our heads and prepare our hearts for prayer. Eternal God, bless the ministries of your church. We thank you for the variety of gifts you have bestowed upon us. Draw us together in one spirit that each of us may use our different gifts as members of one body. May your word be proclaimed with faithfulness. May we continue to support and encourage all those who clergy and Haitian and leadership throughout our district. May we go out and feel the light of your Holy Spirit. For we ask in this name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Following the service today, there are uh, refreshments and food that the church has prepared for us. It's in the social hall. You'll just go through those doors there and there'll be people to guide us. Uh, we're going to invite Jana and her family to go first that uh, Jana might greet you as you uh, exit the sanctuary and you might wish her your blessing and uh, uh, wish her well in this ministry. Thank you again so much for coming. It's great to see all of you here today. We praise God for the work and the ministry that is happening in Cape Atlantic and throughout all of greater New Jersey. You are doing a great ministry on behalf of Jesus Christ. So I send you now out into the world where there is a journey, a path before you. Don't worry so much about arriving, but be concerned about the people on the way that you will encounter. And as you go, may all the good gifts of God go with you, especially God's peace, God's joy, and God's hope. In the name of the one who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. Amen. And, uh, yeah, God bless you. Yep, yep. <laughs> God, God's in the mix. God's in the mix. Steve, thanks so much for coming. It was great to have you. Yeah, sure, Jack. Good to meet you. Oh, thank you, Leah. Thanks. <laughs> 